Amen. Good morning. All praises to our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, to each and every one of you assembled here this morning, and to those of you who are tuned in with us on our social media. We thank God again for this day, for again, this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in this day. Come on, give God the praise today. Thank God for the good day that he has made for us that it was not promised but yet he looked beyond our faults and he gave us what we needed and that was another chance anybody glad to have another chance amen you got another chance today to get it right and we thank god for his grace we thank god for his mercy we thank you for tuning in with us yet again on this, this sunday morning this sunday morning of worship we're going to ask now that our praise and worship team to come as we get ready to enter into worship. We pray that you will worship with us where you are. The Bible tells us that they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And we just want you to pray for us as we continue to minister to you by way of music and the Word of God and in prayer. We pray that your service, service this morning can be a blessing to you. Come on and praise and worship with us.
we come this morning thanking you for everything that you've done for us. Father, we had 2,000 times we couldn't thank you. We thank you for watching over us last night. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for the roof over our heads, food on our tables. Father, we just have so much to be thankful for. But Father, we're really thankful for what you did for us on Calvary's here. Father, we pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are fighting this virus. Father, we pray for all the doctors and the nurses. Be with them and lift them up whatever, Father. Give them strength and get everyone safe back home to their families. Father. Father, we come this morning and send a special prayer for all the kids that are getting ready to go to school this morning, Israel, this month, oh Heavenly Father. Be with them, oh Heavenly Father. Be with the teachers, oh Heavenly Father. Protect them, put your arms around them, oh Heavenly Father. Father, we pray for all those that are sick, shed, as well as those that are bereaved. We pray for Brother Ballard and his family, oh Heavenly Father. Pray for Brother Merchant, oh Heavenly Father. Our Father, we ask us and the kids that exist, oh Heavenly Father. Father, we pray for all those that have that lost loved ones, oh Heavenly Father. Father, we know you're a Father that never makes a mistake. It's not up to us, the person, nor to judge, oh Heavenly Father. Well, you know what you're doing. Now, Father, we pray for our pastor. We pray for all the church ministries, oh Heavenly Father. Be with our pastor this morning. Speak to him, speak to him, oh Heavenly Father. Father, we bless those that are singing your songs this morning, oh Heavenly Father. Our Father, when we sung our last song, pray our last prayer, all we ask for is a rest of place in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
blessed we are yet again to be in the house of God again. One more time. It's a bittersweet moment for me as I get ready to introduce our preacher for this, this morning. And uh, we certainly thank God for this gifted preacher who many of us in this community know how gifted he is as a as a musician. Amen. And even more gifted as a preacher. It's bittersweet because uh, we thank God for him and the, the ministry that he has rendered to the First Baptist Church the past two years as our musician here at First Baptist. We celebrate him for that. We thank you uh, for that. But it's sweet because God has called him to a new assignment. Amen. And, and when, God, <clears throat> when God calls, we have to move. And he is now the, the pastor elect of the Rising Star Baptist Church in Grapeland, Texas. He is now officially an East Texas preacher. Amen. Amen. Everything good come out of East Texas. Amen. We're happy for him. We're so happy for him. And I uh, thought it would be befitting that he would uh, preach the word of God to us on this, this morning, being that this is his last Sunday with the First Missionary Baptist Church. And we want him to know it's not goodbye, it's just see you later. And uh, he always has an open door to this church. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's a bad thing when you can leave and burn bridges. And you can't cross that bridge again. We want him to know that this bridge is still open. And anytime you want to come back and share with us, you can. So he's going to be preaching for us today. We want to pray for him, lift him up before the Lord as he comes in his own way to give us a word from the Lord. Would y'all pray for him as he comes? Good morning, how y'all doing? And the saints of God said, Amen. amen. I would seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I greet you this morning with Jesus' joy, a joy from the one that makes life worth living. For indeed, it's another day's journey. I'm mighty glad about it. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning? Amen. Amen. We're going to share. Uh, we're going to share a word with you this morning. If you have your Bibles, the Gospel according to Saint Mark, chapter number four. Saint Mark, chapter four, beginning with verse thirty-five through forty-one. Reading from the King James Version. And finally, we stand for the reading of God's holy word. St. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 reads, And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, Care is now not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why ye are why ye so fearful? Now it is that ye have no faith. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, 
What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to tag this text this morning, Unexpected Storms. I want to talk about unexpected storms. God, our Father, how we thank you for another expression of your love. Now, God, it's preaching time. Hide me behind the rugged cross of Calvary that they may see more of thee and less of me. Less of me and more of thee. Oh, God, keep my mind steady. Keep my heart and health in your hand. And God, you get all the glory. I'll get none of the credit. Just give me the blessings. Now, God, let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. To Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. This morning, I want to talk about unexpected storms. GPS's global positioning system. It's, it's designed to give you turn by turn directions yeah, yeah. to the place you're going. Yeah, all right. You put in your starting address and you put in your ending address and the GPS, the global positioning system, it navigates your journey from your start to your finish. Yeah, right. But every now and then, your GPS, your global positioning system, it has a way of giving you a reroute. It has a way of telling you that there was an accident on 45. It has a way of saying there's construction on 45. And it causes an unexpected delay. And what you have to do is you have to go around the construction, around the accident, and it delays you because when you put your ending, your ending address, it gives you an estimated time. But when you encounter an unexpected delay, it adds more time to your journey. And I believe this morning in First Baptist Church, that unexpected delays are just like unexpected storms. They just come out of nowhere. I mean, you're driving down 45 and an accident occurs. It, it's an unexpected delay. And while you're living life, it looks like everything is going well, but you encounter an unexpected storm. I believe nobody thought that come March, we will be experiencing COVID-19. We will be experiencing this coronavirus. We were ready for 2020. We're seeing 2020 with 2020 vision. And here comes coronavirus. Being an unexpected storm. Yes, they told us at the last minute, but God is still in control. I mean, no matter what your storm may look like, God is still able. I mean, here it is. We all will go through an unexpected storm. A rerouting storm. But sometimes we go through a redeveloping storm. I mean, this is all just an unexpected delay. I mean, I mean, no one is exempt from storms in your life. But they say either you're headed to a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. The determining factor of how you make it while you're in your storm is what you do in the midst of your storm. As I, if you don't get nothing else I say today, you can hear this, this is my sermon in one sentence. That when your storm begins to cause your boat to be filled, in order not to drown, you have to continue to row the boat. I mean, I'll say it one more time. When your storm begins to cause your boat to be filled, in order not to drown, you have to continue to row the boat. I mean, while you're in the storm, don't get lazy, don't get lax, don't stop praying, don't stop coming to church, don't stop worshiping, don't stop giving, because when you stop, that's when you can drown, but it's your keep on rolling. I mean, if you keep on praying, you keep on coming to worship, keep on giving, keep on serving, can I tell you, you'll make it through your storm? I mean, Jesus and his disciples, they're now planning 
to cross over the Sea of Galilee to the east part of Galilee. And, and some scholars seem to suggest that Jesus was fatigued. Jesus was tired. And he told him and his disciples, let us go unto the other side. I mean, some scholars also suggest that Jesus wanted to start a new ministry on the other side. But whatever the case may be, because Jesus said, let us go unto the other side, they started moving. I mean, this, this Sea of Galilee was freshwater lakes. It was 600 feet below sea level, making it the lowest in the world. It was 14 miles long. It was 14 miles deep. It was the shape of a heart. They had to row three hours to sail onto the other side. That's not right. That's not right. They said no matter how long we got to row, they said no matter what the storm may look like, they say, if Jesus said, let's go, we don't. So I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I want to ask, we can ask ourselves this question. How do we handle unexpected storms? Anybody want to know how we handle them? Number one, we can handle unexpected storms because we have His promise. I mean, everybody say we have his promise. I mean, can I show you what he says in his promise? He says, verse 35, he says, And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. I mean, listen to the words he used. Let us. Which means that Jesus is on board. Which means that they're not traveling by themselves. I mean, Jesus said, let us pass over onto the other side. Now the word over suggests the idea to go about, to go over, but to go through. But it also gives the picture that you have to pass through some things in your life. That this journey, while they're headed onto the other side, they might encounter a storm. They might not encounter a storm. You don't know what you're going to go through to get on the other side, but as long as you got Jesus with you. He says, let us go, watch this, unto, the word unto, don't miss that. It, it, it carries the idea that you're going to a specific place. That you don't know where you're going. You're just going because Jesus told you to go. But you don't know what you're going to go through to get on to. So can I tell y'all if can I tell y'all this? There's a blessing on the other side of through. I mean, he says, let us go unto. Meaning that you might have some unexpected delays. You might have to have unexpected rerouting. I mean, you might encounter an unexpected storm, but you can trust the process because you got Jesus with you. Look what they did. They arose. And while they arose, the multitude went away. It's evening time. The great storm occurred. I mean, the Bible calls this a what? A great storm. So not only do we see his promise, but we also see the magnitude of the storm. All right. Because the Bible specifically calls this storm a great storm. Right. I mean, it was a big storm. It was a loud, it was a strong, a, a large storm. It was so serious, it was so boisterous that, that some scholars seem to suggest that while they were rowing, the storm and the water and the waves were beating the ship. That, that it was so thundering, that, that, that the thundering was, was scaring the people that was on board, scaring the 12 disciples. I mean, this was a big storm. That's right, that's right. But can I tell y'all this? The storm was for a purpose. That storms don't come to hurt you. They come to help you. That storms have a way, watch this, of developing you and not destroying you. But storms, they come to give you direction and not disruption. I mean, these storms, they came because they were obedient to the word of God. But I'll 
tell you this this morning, First Baptist, Jesus can still be trusted in the storms in your life. I mean, anybody encountering a storm this morning? I mean, you can't go to work. I mean, you're working at home, children home all day long, eating up all of your food, your money running low. You don't know when the next time you're going to go back to work. That's a storm. I mean, we got Donald Trump in the White House. We don't know what November is going to look like. That's a storm. I mean, I mean, your family is sick. Your husband's sick. Mama's sick. Daddy's sick. And you don't know how you're going to do it. That's a storm. But it's not to hurt you. It's to help you. Storms come and to show you what you're made of. I mean, not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some storms, watch this, come to clear a path. Because after the rain, there's a rainbow. I mean, after the rain, there's a rainbow. Dwight L. Moody says, watch this, God never made a promise that was too good to be true. If God promised you something, you can take that to the bank. He will come through on this promise. But not only do I see his promise. But secondly, I see his presence. Verse 38, he says, and when he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I mean, do you hear the madness of his sleep? Do you understand how mad his disciples were? Because here it is. The storm is brewing. I mean, the winds and the wave is beating against the boat. And Jesus is asleep in the hinder part of the ship. I mean, this was a fierce and frightening storm. I mean, this was not a storm as usual. This was an unusual storm on the Sea of Galilee. And Pastor Bell, you would think that these 12 disciples should know how to navigate through storms because they were experienced fishermen by trade. And I mean, they already seen the power that Jesus had, but they forgot that the power he possessed inside of him. So they have to go and await Jesus for Jesus to come and calm the situation. I mean, so... I asked myself another question, Pastor Bell. I said, why are these disciples so afraid? Why are they in such a panic? And what came to me is that they knew the teacher, but they did not know his teachings. It's amazing how you can know Jesus, but don't know the power he possesses. I mean, you just know Jesus because I heard mom and dad and grandma and grandpa talk about it. But when you experience Jesus for yourself, you, you go from knowing to believing. I mean, he told them this. He says, he told them, the promise was, let us go unto the other side. Which means that no matter what they had to go through, they were going to get on the other side. But they had his presence because he was asleep on the boat. But Pastor Bill, they had his perfect peace. Because Jesus was at perfect peace because he was asleep with a pillow at the bottom of the ship. And I'm speaking to somebody who may feel like you're calling on Jesus, you're praying on to Jesus, and it seems like Jesus ain't listening to you, Jesus not coming to your rescue. Can I tell you, I'd rather be in a storm with Jesus asleep uh, than to be in a storm without him on my boat. Look at what they say. They say, Master, the word Master carries the idea of rabbi. It's translated rabbi, which means that he's their teacher, he's their instructor. He said, they said, Cares not that we perish. They said, Jesus, how can you be asleep while this storm is going on? They said, Jesus, how can you be asleep and not concerned about your 12 disciples? We're supposed to be your followers. We're supposed to be your right hand men. And you mean to tell me you are asleep? They said, Jesus, you're not concerned. It's not in your interest that we are about to, to die. 
You got concerned about our well-being? No. You sleep while all this commotion is going on? All right. And Reverend White, I thought about something, and this is my application for this point, and I'm moving on. I mean, peace comes not from the absence of trouble, all right. but from the presence of God. I mean, can I say it one more time because I got excited about myself. I mean, peace, it comes not from the absence of struggle, but from the presence of God. That as long as things are going well, you can shout. As long as things are going well, you got peace. But oh, when everything goes crazy in your life, when, when all hell breaks loose in your life and you experience trouble, can you still have peace? Not only do I see his promise, not only do I see his presence, but third and final, I see his power. I mean, can I show you his power and I'm going to move on? With his power, you see that the master, he speaks. Look at what happened. They go to the higher part of the ship. While Jesus is asleep, they go and wake him. And when they awake him, the Bible says in verse 39, and he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Don't that sound like some power we all? I mean, he, he rebuked the wind. I mean, here it is. The word he uses for rebuke, it carries the idea to admonish and to warn. But he told the ship, he told the winds in the way. He said, look at here, I'm telling you who I am. He said, I'm trying to give you far notice of the power that I possess. He said, so look, if you don't, if I'm warning you now, I can tell you later on. Because he says, I rebuke the winds and the waves. And then right behind that, he said, peace. I mean, first he warned them, then secondly, he ordered them. Because the word peace carries the idea to be silent or to be still. It, 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 it's, it's the picture of someone who is ordering someone to do exactly what they say. But, but here it is, this word, be still. I mean, peace, be still. It carries the idea. Not only are you ordered to be quiet, to be hushed, to be silent, but it's in the imperative mood. Very the move means that it's a command, that it's not an option. You don't have an, uh, an option in the matter when Jesus said it, you want to be So Jesus gets up, he wakes up, and he rebukes the wind and the waves. He ordered him by saying peace. He says, and be still. I mean, you do know the purpose of a peace officer, don't you? That when there's a disruption of peace, he comes to make peace. And Jesus says, here it is. If you don't understand me warning you, he says, I can be the peace officer. He says, I can come and make you be still. So the word here, be still, and I'm done, y'all. He says, not only peace, not only am I warning you, not only am I warning you, he says, but I need you to be still. And he says, I need you to remain still. I mean, this word, this terminology for be still, it's, it's, it's used when some when Jesus is now taking the power that the demon possess. That Jesus realized that this storm had demonic power. But it's in the perfect tense. And I get excited about the perfect tense, y'all. Because the perfect tense says it's completed action with present results. Let me, let me show you what that means. It's completed action with present results. So Jesus, when he told this storm, peace be still, he told him back then, and it affects us today, that the reason why we can go through our storms, because he already told the storm back then, peace be still. So I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but you ought to realize the power that Jesus possessed. And I'm out of here. There was a story of a father who was trying to teach his son, never give up. I mean, he was trying to teach him how to never give up. They're driving down the road, this country road, and all of a sudden, the rain started past the bell. And the rain is so thick, the rain is so heavy that the son wants to pull over and stop and sweat and tell his daddy, drive. But the more the son wanted to pull over, the father kept on telling him, keep on driving. 
I mean, with tears in his eyes, Pastor Bell, the father told his son, keep on driving. He drove a little bit more, and it got a little more darker. The rain came down a little more stronger, and the father said, no, son, keep on driving. But no matter what happened, he kept on driving, and all of a sudden, the rain stopped. All of a sudden, the sun started to shine. And the father said, son, I told you, if you keep on driving, he said one thing about storms is storms is only temporary. I mean, can I get somebody up in here to testify that my storms are only temporary? And not only is my storms only temporary, but it also suggests that the latter is greater than your pains. So can I tell you, no matter how much you want to give up, I mean, no matter how much you want to throw in the top, I mean, no matter how much the storm is beating on your boat, can I tell you, just keep on striving. I mean, just keep on rolling the boat. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you may encounter some unexpected storms in your life, but can I tell you,
when you have Jesus, you got Jesus in your boat. As long as Jesus is there, then you're going to make it. You got to believe that in your heart that your storm is not to destroy you. Your storm is to develop you. All things will work together for the good. Those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Don't let that storm you're going through bring you down. God is going to see you through. I believe that. He'll see you through. If He's done it in the past, then He can do it right now. Thank you. Has to heal for that, that word that, that's relative to all of us. You just got to trust God that you're going to make it to the other side. If you're here, you're with us, tuned in with us on this morning, and you don't have this. This Jesus that we are mentioning, then you can receive him today. Accepting him as your Lord and Savior. You don't have to be in a church building to do that. You can do that outside of the walls. All you have to do is accept, believe, and confess. After you do that, then Christ commands us to come to church. Then you can have church even if you live until this pandemic has been resolved. You're going to have to learn how to have some personal devotion at your own leisure and not always count on a church building to make it through. God is showing us that. That even without the walls, you still need to worship Him. And if you're here, you're listening to us, you can do that even now. Time is filled with swift transition.
letting us know how to handle these unexpected storms. Amen. They're going to come. You cannot, you cannot avoid them. They're just going to come. Storms know your address. They know you. They know your phone number. You cannot, you can't avoid them. But we have some assurance. That is the presence of Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate with us. We'll thank him for the sermon. We pray and hope that this will not be the last time we hear from Pastor Broderick Hill. He's, he's family now. Amen. He's family. And uh, he's definitely going to, to be missed here at the First Baptist Church. But we wish him well. We wish him well. Told him that anything that I can do to help him as I would call the older pastor to him. He always called me old. And so anything I can do to help him, I'm gonna do that. Now every every young preacher needs an older preacher, or older preachers to, to give them some direction. And uh, he, he is the one that will listen. Long as he'll listen, God can continue to do great things in his life. So, Roger Hill, we celebrate you. We thank you for, your, for what God has done for you. And uh, we know you have always had a divided passion because you are an awesome musician and a good preacher. And we know that God has higher things for you to do. Let's go and be the best pastor you can at the Rising Star Baptist Church in Greatland, Texas. If you stay faithful, there is no secret what God can do through you. Love your people. Love your people. Some of them may be unlovable, but you still got to love your people. You will be their shepherd and their leader, and you do what God has called you to do. Then everything will be all right. Come on, can we celebrate Pastor Hill one more time? I have a host, host of announcements, so would you please indulge with me uh, just for a moment. Uh, starting Wednesday, every last Wednesday of the month, we're going to have uh, what we call God's people praying through this pandemic. We're going to do this every last Wednesday of the month until we uh, reopen our church building. We're going to have somewhat of a 10, 15 minute Bible lesson from myself and then we're going to have a series of prayers through some of our prayer warriors of the church. We'll start that <clears throat> this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. So we pray that even though you can't be with us here, that you will tune in with us Wednesday night at 6 o'clock as we go through our series of prayer. There's so much we need to pray for. So much we need to pray for. And we're going to we're going to try to address some of these subjects um, that we're dealing with in this world today. And that will start Wednesday, and our main scripture will be James chapter 5, verse 16. Amen. In respect to, to prayers, uh, there's a host of our members uh, who needs our prayers. Let me first um, salute Sister Edna Ballard, who uh, was a sage, a seasoned saint of our church who transitioned the other day to the other side and we celebrated her life on Friday at 11. And uh, we thank God for Sister Edna Ballard and we, we definitely are going to, to miss her and uh, miss her riding on the passenger side of Brother Ballard's 300. Amen. Doesn't seem the same without her on that passenger side. Celebrate her as a good member and a great wife to her husband. And we're definitely going to be lifting Brother Bennett Ballard up as he goes through this bereaved moment. It's, it's tough. They were married for almost over 47 years. And now death has separated them physically. And so it's going to be tough for him. But he can make it through our prayers. We're going to also continue to pray for Brother Billy Merchant uh, as he 
he mourns the life, life of his wife as well, Sister Celine Merchant. Sister, <clears throat> excuse me, Sister Bledsoe is requesting our prayer. She lost her sister. Sister Ruby Anderson is requesting our prayer. She lost her brother. Brother Michael Anderson lost his stepdaughter. Sister Nakia Bryant lost her grandmother. Brother Trent is in the hospital. And Sister Cynthia Osbury, her grandson, is struggling for his life. And so uh, there's a lot we can pray for y'all. There's a lot of people hurting and who have lost loved ones. And so we want to lift all these names up and pray. Um, this coming Tuesday from 5.30 to 7, if you don't have a Sunday school book, come by the church and get you a Sunday school book. We're going to start our Sunday school back up in the month of August. And we won't be together physically, but we will do it through conference call. And so those of you who want to be a part of Sunday school, can be. And we're going to start that back up in August. And so <clears throat> in order for you to be a part of Sunday school, you need to come and get a Sunday school book. And we're going to be here Tuesday between 5.30 and 7 to hand those Sunday school books out for you. Amen? This is an announcement for, from Dollar for Scholar. Dollar for Scholar is asking all college students to please check your email. Please check your email. I think we have some 13 college students in our church and they're asking you to please check your email. It's very important that you check your email, all our college students. So if you're a parent or you know someone that, that, uh, that's a college student of our church, please ask that student to please check their email. They're very vital information that they need to know. Speaking of our Dolphin Scholar, I want to congratulate Sister Reagan Long for being our South Texas District Association recipient. And uh, she will receive a $1,000 scholarship from the South Texas District Association for her upcoming uh, fall semester. Uh, we're going to have some type of virtual banquet uh, on August the 8th. And so we'll have more information for that as well. If there are any First Baptist members that are going to school and we don't know about you, please let us know. If you submit your papers, we'll be happy to, to help you, uh, give you some type of uh, stipend, help you with your books and tuition. If you're going to school, but we don't know unless you submit your papers. Amen? Also, we want to continue to uh, urge you, encourage you to continue to support our Dalfour Scholar. We, we do have new students that are getting ready to go into uh, the college this fall, and some have already started summer school. And so we're asking that you would please, please continue to help us with our dollar for scholar, that we can continue to be a blessing uh, to those who are attempting higher education. Amen? All right, God bless you. God, God keep you. This is our prayer. Those are all my announcements. Again, I want to express my gratitude to this church for what you've done for me on last weekend. I thank you for your love and your support, and I ask that you would continue, please continue to pray for me. I know that there have been a series of questions about when are we going to reopen our church, and I appreciate your concern. I do. I appreciate your concern. Listen, I'm not standing here Glad that you're not here. I want you here. I need you here. Amen. But it's just not safe for you to be here right now. And so I hope that you would be patient and understand uh, the concern as a pastor that I have for my congregation. That I do not want you to get to get sick. Uh, I, I'm knowing a lot of people who have been contracted with this virus, and uh, it's a struggle for some people who contract this virus. And this is why I urge you, beseech you that you will please take it serious. Uh, don't, don't be irresponsible. But please, if you can, put a mask on wherever you wherever you go. Amen? Amen. All right, God bless you. Remember today is our tribe, our tribe day, so please submit your tribe, um, your tribe money and your tribe, uh, 
group that you represent, and we will make sure that it's recorded. And on tomorrow, you will get a text message from a few of our members to let you know what placement your tribe was for the month of July. Amen. All right. God bless you. God, God keep you is our prayer. Again, we want to uh, continue to pray for our sick, those who are sick, and those who um, who are elderly in our church. That God will continue to protect them. All right. God bless you. That's all I have on this morning. We pray you have a great week. And uh, on Wednesday night, we'll see you at 6, 6 p.m. And we will also give you the dates that you can come and pick up your Lord's Supper. All right. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Let us all stand. We're going to, to dismiss. Would you buy your ears just for a moment? Father, we thank you for the message that we heard today. Thank you for preaching our, thank you for preaching. Help us, God, to handle, navigate through these unexpected storms. Most importantly, God, we lift up the preacher who's turning the page and a new chapter in his life. He's got a new assignment. Let him know, Master, that you are with him and that if he listens to your voice, and he will be successful. Help him, God, to be able to have spiritual discernment, spiritual wisdom, as he go in and out before his people. Help him, God, to be the, the leader that you would have him to be. And God, that he would only hear your voice and shut out other voices that's in his ear. Help him to continue to study your word may rightly divide the word of truth. And we thank you now for his life. We thank you for his service to this church. We lift up after those names that were called on this morning. So many names. There are probably were names that were not called that we don't even know about. But those names that we mentioned today, they need you. And we know God, you are God that will be there for them. So comfort them now. Put your loving arms around them and let them know that everything is going to be all right. We pray, God, as we continue to move forward, navigate through this pandemic, that you will continue to order our steps and that we will listen to you and you only. Thank you, God, for our praise and worship team for blessing us in the ministry of music and voices. Thank you for their service. Thank you for our deacons who are here to serve in any capacity. Thank you for our preachers who are here to help. And God, we just pray, God, that you will continue to bless our church, bless our members. Help us, Master, to continue to bless your church. We thank you for those who give, those who serve. We're grateful for them. Thank you for the lives sailing merchant and Edna Ballard. And we pray for those husbands who now, Master, have lost their wives. Be with them and let them know that you're right there on the other side. Now by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest food and abide in us henceforth now and forevermore. Let us say amen. Brother Randolph, thank you for coming and having out today. Amen. Glad to have you.